So you can attach it wherever you want. Simple to use. There's one button on the side, and you press it to see your progress. So there's a series of 10 LEDs, and they represent 100% of your progress. So here, three just lit up, which means I'm 30% of the way there. If I see that the next light is blinking when I press this, that means that the light that I'm in right now is bright enough to be beneficial for my health. And when I hit 100% of my daily goal, Sunsprite does a little light dance and celebrates with me. <laughs> um, Sunsprite actually connects to our iOS app as well, which we're getting mapped to the computer here just perfectly in time. Awesome. Thank you very much. So what we've done is we've taken decades of medical research and distilled it into one easy to use uh, interface. So what you'll see here is front and center is a giant glowing sun, which represents your progress for the day. So I've gotten 100% of my bright light today. Below that shows the current intensity and it shows the number of minutes that I have to go in this current intensity of light to reach my recommended dose. At the very bottom is a quick profile of my light exposure throughout the day. Top left shows my battery level of the device, and top right shows the current UV index. So if you're worried about getting too much light, if you're worried about sunburn, skin cancer, worried about vitamin D, this is all here too. I can click on the trends page to get a little bit more detail um, on my daily light exposure. So here's a graph that I can zoom into, and you can see I got all my light today between 10.41 and about 11.30 a.m. Sunsprite takes your own personal sleep-wake preferences and makes recommendations on when the best time to get bright light is for you. So you can see my optimal time is shaded in bright green here at the bottom. And then there's zones of red where I don't want to get bright light or else that'll keep me up at night. If you want to view your progress over the week, you can click the week button and see how you're doing here. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday I was in Austin for South by Southwest, so I was nailing my life at that time. Uh, and then there's some achievements and fun little streaks that we keep track of to keep everybody engaged. Um, and some fun badges. Uh, we have been live on Indiegogo. So we launched on Indiegogo just uh, three weeks ago. Uh, we just hit our goal of $50,000 a week ago, so we're really excited about that. Um, if you'd like to check it out, Google Sunsprite or just scan that nice little colorful QR code that we have here. And the funnest part about this for me is the question and answer from people, so I'm happy to take your questions now. How much does it cost? Uh, $99 on Indiegogo right now. Get it while you can before the price goes up. <laughs> Other thoughts? Yeah. I can get my full sun for the day, but if I'm say using my phone or my laptop, that also decides to show that would throw off my sleep too. Yep, exactly. So I, I guess like, do you at least warn people at like obviously that red time would be the time they don't want me doing that, or they want to use like flux or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. We like flux a lot. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's it's not only bright light that you want. So you want your bright light early in the day to basically wake up your brain. It affects your melatonin profile. You also want to avoid it before you go to bed at night. Uh, so that, that's key component too. And what do we do? We wake up and go in an office each morning, and then we sit up with an iPad in our bed each night. I, yeah. At least I do it. I still do. No, I'm just wondering. Like, <laughs> people can look at this and say, well, I'm getting all my light. They may not realize the, the um, possible cause of the Yeah, exactly. So that's why we try, to, we try to show you basically your profile on a day-to-day -day basis here, so that if you are sitting in front of something later at night, that's going to show up on your graph. <laughs> yes? Yep, so there's two ways to use the device. First is just on its own. So you don't actually need the iPhone app. Uh, you press and hold the button for three seconds, you clear the accumulation. So you can hand it off to as many people as you want. It's designed right now to pair one device with one phone. Uh, we've heard a lot of feedback that parents especially are interested in monitoring children to make sure the kids are getting out enough to be healthy, so we're looking into you know, multiple phone or multiple devices syncing with one master phone. Can you give, can give you alerts to say you're overexposed? Yeah, it can give you UV alerts. So it'll push things to you if you're in uh, light that could be damaging to you or your skin, which for me in the summer here. It happens to be every May or June, I forget there's UV out and I go out and get burned. So. Yes? Uh, two questions. Is it suitable for people to sleep apnea? And can it be rented rather than bought? Uh, so your second question, can it be rented? Not, not right now. It's, we're purchase only. Uh, and is it suitable for people with sleep apnea? Sure. I, I don't know 
um, what it would do to help in that case. I, I haven't seen any literature around bright light and sleep apnea. That doesn't mean that there's not, but I, I don't know any research time. So what is the underlying sensing technology? Is it just a uh, UV sensor or other so, wavelengths? So we sense, we sense two uh, spectra of light. We sense UV and we sense uh, visible light and use a special filter that is designed to mimic the response to the human eye. So they are tied up to some like medical research that shows the, the relevance uh, to personal health. Yeah, yeah, so there's been uh, quite a few studies, especially on visible bright light is what we're mainly focused on right now. But UV is, of course, very exciting to a lot of people too. So. Uh -huh. We hope to build it all out. Yes. Any plans for jet lag management type features? Sure. There's so many things you can do with this that it's hard to focus on on just one thing. And part of the fun of running a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo is we get early adopters telling us what's most exciting for them. So we want our early adopters to drive a lot of the direction to where we go next. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, are you, do you have any plans to? Other devices to put this technology on like mobile cases and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We have we have plans around that about putting it into other devices. We're we're talking to people uh, right now. We also have plans to open up our API so that different devices can connect to us and so that users can get their own data, uh, which is something that we believe in. That kind of the future of health and wellness is going to be the individual empowered to make his or her own decisions. We want to make sure this data is accessible. Yep. 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 We. The, so the short answer is we will not have it forever. The long answer is I have no clue where it's going to go. But we would love to iterate uh, into other things. Yep. I don't know if you said this before. Uh, is it waterproof? Uh, it's water resistant, so you can't go swimming with it. You should treat it like you would treat your mobile phone. If you're out in the rain and you hold your phone out, it's going to be fine. It gets a little hard to move the touch screen up and up. But if you drop it in the toilet, come by another one. What about going to the beach? Uh, if yeah. Pick summer activity. Yep, yep. So I wouldn't wear it in the water. Uh, but right now we're focused on getting people enough light and not as much on getting too much. Uh, so we'll see how much the market is, you know, this way versus the other way. Yep. Seems to me it's a question of uh, how well clothed you are, how the UV affects you. So this effect is bright light through the eyes is right. what affects your circadian rhythm. But you're right, how well clothed you are. Um, and there's there's ways that we're thinking about to get around that without making it too onerous to the user to implement that. Yes. This is one of the first presentations I've been to of a wearable device. So what's running through my head, and I don't know where this goes, so I thought I'd ask you, mm -hmm. is how does it interact with other wearables, oh, a smartwatch, Google Glass. I don't have any answers. Have you, have you guys thought, thought about that for yourself? Yeah, so that's a good, good question. Um, eventually, we want to integrate it into a lot of different things. We just launched three weeks ago, so right now we're focused on selling this to a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> so you just want to integrate it with me. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we, we would love to integrate it into a number of devices and platforms and things like that. It's, uh, you know, with a tiny startup, it's tough to figure out what your priorities are and, and uh, what we can get done. Yep. Yep. You mean in terms of in terms of the time of the place we are? Yeah. So it. it yeah. Sure. So the question is, if I get it right, is does the device account for time change? Yeah. Can you repeat uh, the question? So the, the, the device itself uh, can't on its own, but it's resettable by you. If you're syncing with your iPhone, your iPhone's going to adjust to time zone, so it will account for all that. Um, so if you're getting a jet lag or something like that, it's one of the things you're looking at. Other thoughts, questions? Yeah. 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 So so yes, yes, you will. It's in the works. We don't we don't have a delivery date. I'd love to get it out by the end of this year. But there's two of us working on this project right now. Uh, I had a board meeting on Friday, and I was getting clobbered a little bit on revenue projections and uh, the sales expense of date. So, other questions? Good. Thanks very much.
Come join New England's largest technology meetup, sponsor an event, present, or attend. Visit www.bostonnewtech.org.